Hey everybody, Jeremy here. Today I'm going to be taking a look at the McFarlane Toys Drifter motorcycle from the movie The Batman. So I wanted to get this motorcycle because I feel like it can go well, potentially go good with other seven inch figures because even though it's from the movie, The Batman, this bike doesn't look like a typical Batman vehicle. So it's like a regular cafe racer style motorcycle. And we don't see motorcycles in this scale for seven inch figures all that often, especially not with the detail that McFarlane tends to give its, um, its vehicles and figures. So very curious about this. We're going to crack open this box. We're going to take a look at it. Going to put some DC multiverse figures on it and see how well it holds up. So let's take a look. So I wanted to start this off with a figure on the bike so that you can see what it looks like because this bike doesn't just belong to Batman. You know, it is a cafe style racer bike, you know, just a generic motorcycle. So ideally any figure of the seven inch scale should be able to get on this bike and look pretty good on it. So I looked at my shelf and I thought that the red hood will be a good candidate for it, especially, you know, since he's got the leather, you know, and he's, he looks like he would ride a motorcycle anyway. So this is how he looks on it. You guys let me know what you think. You think that he's a good fit? Do you think that the scale works for this particular um, figure and for the scale in general? Because I don't have the Drifter uh, figure from McFarland Toys and I'm not going to get him because I'm not, I'm not a fan of the way that he looks. But if you have other McFarland Toys figures and you're looking for a motorcycle, kind of like a regular motorcycle, not necessarily, you know, like the freaky one with the skulls on it and stuff, you know, but just like a regular, ordinary, everyday motorcycle. This is what it would look like, at least with this particular figure. So let me know what you think about that. In my opinion, I think that this motorcycle is a little bit big for these figures. Um, and I say that because when I put the figure on, their feet can't touch the ground. And if you want it to be kind of, well, I guess as realistic as possible, if they were going to be riding a motorcycle, then you will want their feet to touch the ground, you know, because how else are you going to stop the bike if you can't get a foot down? The whole thing is going to fall. That's a little bit nitpicky, I know. But still, the bike, even when you take away the, the feet don't touch the ground thing, the bike still looks a little bit big. I think that you can still get away with it. I think that it still works for... Um, posing and, and getting some pictures and whatnot. But uh, yeah, I think it's just a wee bit too big, just a little bit too big. I also think that because of the style of this bike, you're going to need a figure that's relatively nimble in order to just kind of get them in this position because it's not a perfect fit. Red Hood works because he already has good articulation in his legs and everything. There's not a whole lot of restriction. So I was able to get him bent up in a way and still, you know, make it look like his foot is, you know, on the rear brake and that his foot is also on the uh, shifter right there. And it just took a little bit of finagling. It's his butt is not necessarily planted firm on the seat, but it is close enough. So it is possible, depending on the figure that you get, to get them to, you know, kind of look like they're sitting down and kind of making it look kind of cool, you know, but you just got to work, work with it. And not every character is going to be able to do this. So you just kind of have to look at your collection and see which one is going to fit best for you. Now, I'm going to take Red Hood off, but before I do, I want to show you that along with the bike, you're also going to be getting this helmet here. Um, and this is for the drifter. You can pop his head off and then you can put this um, on. It has a little hole right there. So you can just stick that down in the peg and then you should be good to go. But for the red hood, you know, if I wanted to put the helmet on, I mean, you can't do it because, you know, it's, it's not going to fit that way. Uh, but just to get an impression, it's kind of how he would look if you could get the helmet on him. You know, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I gotta admit, I like the way that this looks with the red hood. I think he's a perfect figure for this, but I gotta take him off as much as I don't want to because I took me a while to kind of get him to look relatively decent on this bike. But now we need to take a closer look at the motorcycle. 
I don't think you have to be a gearhead to appreciate this bike, but it certainly does help, especially if you know a lot about the different mechanics and parts of the bike that you can look at and say, oh wow, yeah, they really included that piece, that part, that piston or whatever the case may be. But if you're just looking at it just from an aesthetic point of view, they did a very good job on this bike. The bike looks very nice. Um, I like how you have the, the engine down here. I do like how uh, you got some black paint in there, like some dry brushing going on there, you know, so it looks a little bit worn and it just makes it look better, not just plain silver, you know, like it's straight off the showroom floor, you know? And then the other thing about not being straight off the showroom floor is that the bike has some scuffs and scratches on it. Like alongside the tank, you can see some scratches there. There's also some scratches on the other side. There are some scratches right back there, right behind the main seat. And there's even like some scratches right there on the headlight. Speaking of the headlight, get a closer look at that headlight there. Um, it's all you know, just straight up white. It has a crack in it. Um, I, I don't know if this particular bike was modeled after a particular cafe racer style motorcycle or not, but I personally would like it if this were clear and then you can kind of see like a light bulb on the inside of it. I would have liked that better than just straight up white, but hey, that's just me, just as nitpicking. And the tires are nice and rubbery. Well, you know, they, they feel like rubber. I don't know if it actually is rubber, but you know, it feels good. And the bike itself feels good too. You know, it, it's plastic and you're not going to mistake it for any other kind of material, you know, but it still feels pretty sturdy. Now it comes with this stand here because they did not, ugh, they did not include a kickstand. I wish that they would have had a kickstand so that you could, uh, you know, maybe have a pose where you got the bike kind of turned like that with the handlebars. It's on the kickstand and it's just sort of like this. And you can have a figure standing up right beside it. I think that that would be a really good option. And I don't think that it would have, you know, been too much to just include a plastic kickstand just to hold the bike up. But McFarlane Toys decided against that and decided to use this stand is what the stand instead um it's easy to get it in there just you know prop up the back tire and just push it down like that and then boom you know it stands up perfectly no wobbling no nothing that's not something that you'll ever have to worry about with that stand and if you're wondering like how the motorcycle if i can take that it's a tight fit <laughs> if you wonder how the motorcycle functions just you know as a toy that rolls it rolls good in the limited frame space that I have, you know, and you can turn the handlebars and it's going to turn left, turn the handlebars right, it's going to go right, you know, so it works <laughs> as, as a rolling toy would work. But there's nothing else on it that moves, um, but the detail is very nice, very nice detail on this from the uh, dry brushing there on the engine, like I said, and then over here for the clutch and then the uh, brake lever on the other side. You know, everything just, it looks good, you know, even with the brakes right there, right there on the disc, it's all, it's all there. It's a good looking bike, you know, and I think that that's something that, um, I don't think that you will ever regret getting this because it is a good looking bike. I don't think you have to be a fan of DC, McFarlane, or Batman to appreciate this bike because it's just a generic bike. And even if you don't collect this line, you collect other lines. This is something that you can go out and get and you can use it with figures from other lines and you can make it work so long as the scale is similar. So I like the fact that you have that option and there's not a whole lot of bikes like this that you can just pick up at any old big box retail store. I know that Maisto has their motorcycles, but those are more suited for like Marvel Legends and not larger figures. So that works for, uh, for McFarlane and other figures and I like that. And just right before we go, I mean, check it out. Here's a Marvel Select, Sam Wilson, Captain America. You know, I did a video on that one a while back. So, you know, just to get a sense of how he would look on this motorcycle, roughly, you know, there you go. Can't really see his head all that much, but yeah. So just imagine he, you know, has his hands up, you know, and, and is working like that. So it works for different figures, you know, just use your imagination. 
and that's what it's all about. So that's it, you guys. I think that this is a really cool motorcycle. Just got to keep in mind that whatever figure you choose to use for it, uh, that make sure that that figure has some decent articulation and can be pretty nimble because the riding position on a cafe style racer is, uh, you know, hunched over a bit. So you're going to need that flexibility to reach everything and make it look real. All right. So that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, I'm Jeremy and I'll talk to you later.